I have a full course meal for us today, and I want to begin by introducing you to someone, someone special. It's someone that you may have met before, but possibly not. If you are born again, chances are you've met this person, but not necessarily. I want to introduce you today to your new self. Now, I'm not talking about external new self. I mean, my wife just lost 50 pounds over the past uh, seven months. God bless my wife. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm married to the woman of my youth. Uh, she makes me feel younger every day. And uh, it's almost hard to keep up with her uh, these days. But we talk about, oh, it's the new you. You're a mere shadow of your former self. And we say things like that. Or someone gets a new hairstyle and we say, oh, it looks so nice. It's the new you. Well, I'm not talking about that kind of a new self. Those are all superficial. They're important. It's nice to have a, have a makeover. But I'm going deeper than that. I'm talking about your new self. I'm talking about my new self. What I'm referring to is not externally. I'm talking about internally. You see, when you were born, you were born with a physical body and a soul and a spirit. The soul would yet take shape but your spirit was born inside of you dead. Your body was alive, but your spirit was dead. Now, if you've come to know Jesus Christ, you are born again. What that means is, while you have the same body and you have the same soul, you have the same parents, you have the same uh, hair, uh, the same teeth, the same face, you have the same height and weight, a lot is the same, but inside, your spirit is now new. What was dead is now alive for the first time. You and I both celebrate physical birthdays. I won't tell you how old I am. But the beauty is, when we come to know Jesus Christ, we now have two birthdays. We have the birthday of our physical self, but we also now have a second birthday of our new self. Now listen to me carefully. The key to Christian maturity is learning to recognize the new self. It, the key to growing in Christ, to living the Christian life, the key is to learn to feed your new self, to recognize your new self, to not simply feed your body and your mind, which is part of your soul, but to feed your spirit. Now, the book of Colossians is written to exalt the supremacy of Christ and to deal with three diseases. Chapter 1 of Colossians uh, exalts Christ. Chapter 2 applies the exaltation and supremacy of Christ to the virus that affects the mind. Chapter 3 exalts Christ and applies the supremacy of Christ to deal with the viruses that affect our behavior. And chapter 4 exalts the supremacy of Christ and applies the supremacy of Christ to the viruses that would attack our behavior. We've only got two weeks left in the book of Colossians and today, we come to Colossians 3, which deals with the virus that is out to attack our behavior. But before we begin with verse 1, I want to begin with where we're going, and it's verse 17. Colossians 3.17 is absolutely one of the dynamic verses that describe life transformation. You see, the best that this world can do is what we call behavior modification. But the best this world can do doesn't hold a candle to what our God can do in Jesus Christ. Jesus does not care about behavior modification. Jesus cares about behavior transformation. And I promise you, if you are born again, as you learn to recognize, feed, and live out of your new self, 
you will go from worrying about behavior modification and you will begin moving into behavior transformation. And that's what Colossians 3.17 talks about. Let me quote it for us. And whatever you do, whatever you do, think of it, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now think of that. In whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus. This means what you do at home. This means what you do when the lights are off. This means what you do at work, what you do in the neighborhood, what you do when you fill out your tax form, uh, what you do when, you're, uh, when you have idle time, or what you do for recreation. Whatever you do, God wants to stamp his ownership on every area of life so that whether you do it in word or in deed, talking of this is a total wrapping our arms around behavior. All behavior is to be under Christ, exalting Christ, giving thanks through Christ to God the Father. Now this is an incredible verse of behavior transformation. How does it work? It works out of the new self. Now, let's walk our way through the first 16 verses of Colossians 3, and we're going to come back to where we started with Colossians 3.17. How do we get to the place where we are living in the middle of behavior transformation? So that we can say, whatever I do in word or deed, I do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wouldn't you like to be able to say that? This isn't blowing smoke. This isn't mirrors. This isn't trickery. This isn't hollow talk. This is where God wants you and me to live. Now, how is it possible? Well, the focus begins in Colossians 3 with the new self. And that's where we want to pick it up. Colossians 3, verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now what this is saying is your new self and my new self is in Christ. Now this is where God wants you and me to focus from the moment we are born again. God does not want us focusing on the past. He wants us focusing on who we are today and who we are becoming. And who we are today is our new self. And who we are becoming is more and more like Christ. This is why if you want to get to know who you really are today, you get to know Christ. You seek Christ. This is in order to have behavior transformation, you need to have identity transformation. You need to go from recognizing who you were to who you are today in Christ. We are not tethered to our past. We are tethered to our future, and it's who we are in Christ. Today, you are in Christ. That's why it says, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And not just to seek Christ, seek the ascended Christ. This isn't the little baby Jesus in the manger. This isn't the Christ mangled on the cross. This is the ascended, glorified, healed put together Christ. And that's where you are. It's where I am from the moment I'm born again. And that's why to know Christ is to know ourselves. So the focus is, don't focus on your old self, focus on your new self and who you are in Christ. Then it goes on to say, don't just seek those things. It says, set your minds on things that are above not on earthly things. Now, let me tell you, your old self is on earth. Your new self is on earth in your body, and it's in heaven. 
That's why the scripture says don't focus on things on earth. Don't focus on your old self, which will only know what it is to be on earth. But focus on your new self, which is on earth and in heaven. Now, just how radical a shift is this, moving from the old self to the new self? Listen to what it says in verse 3. For you have died, and your life is now hidden with God in Christ. Now, my friend, either that's true or it's not. But let's assume the Bible knows what it's saying when it describes our new self. It says it's so radical that we died. We died to our old self. And we now live to our new self, and our new self is with God in Christ. It's what it means to be in Christ. You are in Christ. I am in Christ. What a powerful revelation. Now, just how long will this new self live? How long will this new self last? Well, it says in verse 4, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So, the old self is only going to live as long as your body's alive. Once your body di dies, the old self is gone anyway. But from the moment you're born again, from that moment till all eternity, your new self is alive. So you might as well get to know your new self now. So we begin by shifting the focus from the old self to the new self. Now, what follows here is absolutely some of the most practical advice given anywhere in the entire Bible on how to live the transformed life. How to live the transformed life. And in order to do that, we need to know what to do with the old self and what to do with the new self. It gives three exhortations on what to do with the old self and three exhortations on what to do with the new self. Don't you love it? So, it begins, verse 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever is earthly in you. And then it goes on and gives six specifics. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Let me briefly break those down. Sexual immorality. This is, there's plenty of homosexual sin and there's plenty of heterosexual sin. It's all put in one. If it's not within the covenant of marriage, it's off limits. And God says, put to death sexual immorality. It goes on. Sexual immorality, impurity. This refers to any of the contaminations that are outside of God's perfect law. Passions. These are the appetites that are connected to our sin nature. It doesn't mean all passion is wrong. In fact, Jesus redeems our passion, but it does refer to the passions of uh, our nature that are connected to sin. Evil desire. This one is profound. The fact of the matter is, your old nature has crawling around inside. This is your old self, crawling around inside, inself, inside itself. Evil desires, desires that will end with self-destruction. They're crawling around inside each one of us, and they need to be put to death. Covetousness. Covetousness on the surface is desiring things that I don't have. But it's more than that. Covetousness believes the lie that if I had those things, I would be more fulfilled or more important, that somehow those things would add value to me. But once I sell out to physical things, I'm reducing myself to less than I already am. And that is idolatry. When I lift up into the place of God any physical object thinking that this will elevate my identity or my self-worth. That is idolatry. Now, do you see how all these appeal to the old self, but are completely contrary to the new self? The fact of the matter is, 
I am who I am because God loved me and he proved how much he loved me in Jesus Christ. Jesus now fulfills me. Jesus shows me just how much I'm worth. He satisfies the desires of my soul so that I wouldn't think of elevating some other object as if that thing, if I got that person to like me, if I, if I had you know a million Instagram followers or whatever, those things would somehow validate my worth. What a perversion. No, I don't need to prove to anybody how worthwhile my life is. I am loved by God because of his son, Jesus Christ. And he's shown me that the old evil desires of the sin nature of my old self, the best thing I can do to them is put them to death. Now, <clears throat> once I put them to death, listen to what it says. It says, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. And more than that, it says, verse 7, in these, you too all used to walk when you lived in them. We all have an old nature and we all used to live out of that nature. But then, verse 8, but now you must put them all away. And it goes on to mention anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old self with its practices. So what do we do with this old self? The person that was born when our physical bodies were born, that person that's rooted in twisted desires, that, that old self that's dead to God and will never have relationship with God. The best thing we can do is to put the death, the desires of that nature, and to then put off the practices of that nature. And then, this is where it gets good. Three exhortations on what we are to do. Verse 19. Uh, hold on. Verse 10. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. So it says, first of all, put on your new self. Take it up. Take it as your identity. Take it as the, the, the new person that you are. And then it goes on, verse 12. Put on then as God's chosen ones, so we're putting on the new nature, and with the new nature, put on compassion, hearts of kindness, humility, meekness, patience, bearing with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And then this, and above all, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Put on the new self. Put on the new self. Put on the new attitudes. Put on the new words. Put on the new character. Take on yourself the new identity of your new self. Praise God. Now to make this perfectly clear, once we start seeing ourselves for who we really are as a new self, once we start believing that when I put my faith in Christ, a transformation happened inside of me, then we get two incredible blessings. And they're contained here in Colossians 3.15 and 3.16. First, Colossians 3.15, we now have the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. Listen to what it says, verse 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts so that uh, indeed you were called to one body and be thankful. Now think of that. 
Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. That means rule in your new born again spirit. And when the peace of Christ rules in your spirit, you can know from then on that you not only have peace with God, but you can judge good from wrong, right from wrong, good and evil. You can judge your words, your attitudes, your relationships, everything out of that inner space where you are receiving and welcoming and ruling in the peace of God. Think of it. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So when the peace of Christ comes, the moment you're born again, that peace is strong. That peace can rule. And you can listen to that peace. And when the peace is, is shattered, you know you've gone in the wrong direction. You can trust the peace of Christ to speak to you, to rebuke you, to correct you, to call you home. And let me, even as I say those words, I hear an echo in your spirit saying, that's what I want. I know what he's talking about. I want the peace of Christ to rule in my hearts. And my friend, I want to tell you, you can. The peace of Christ is real. And it lives in your new spirit. And don't settle for anything less. You can trust the peace of Christ because the peace of Christ is the evidence of the presence of Christ who lives in you the moment you're born again. Then we come to verse 16. We come from the peace of Christ, which is so powerful, and we're told to let it rule in our hearts. Now in verse 16, we come to the word of Christ. And it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. This is so powerful. Not only do we have, in a sense, the subjective peace of God, but we have the objective word of God. The peace of Christ, a little bit subjective. The word of Christ, objective. Now, this is the word of Christ. And underneath the word of Christ, the written word, is the living word, the prophetic word of Christ. When Christ will speak to us when we're praying, he'll warn us in the middle of the night. He'll awaken us and tell us to pray about those things. Those, the prophetic word of Christ always comes under the written word of Christ, but both are the word of Christ. Now it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. This means to read the word, to study the word, to memorize the word, to meditate on the word, to let the word permeate our thinking. Let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. But then it goes on specifically and it says teaching and admonishing. Right now, I am teaching and in a moment, give me a moment, I'm going to be admonishing. The word of Christ does not dwell richly simply by teaching. Because the word of Christ is not about information, it's about transformation. And teaching without admonishing does not bring transformation, it brings information. Teaching and admonishing is when the word of Christ dwells richly. And this is why Jesus, when he commissioned the disciples and sent them out, he said, go in all the world, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey whatsoever things I have commanded you. Not just teaching, but teaching to obey. Teaching with admonishing. There always needs to be activation. There always needs to be application. If you're a teacher, a women's teacher, a men's teacher, please don't just teach, admonish. Always call for action. Always lead to activation. But it also says singing to one another. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. We as a local church in, in, enjoy a plethora of different styles of worship. There are psalms, there's scripture songs, there are hymns, the more doctrinal, and there's spiritual songs. Uh, none's better than the other. It's, it's more like having uh, salad and the main course and dessert. I don't know which is which, but there are different styles of songs. 
But notice, during the singing and the stirring up of worship, whether psalms, hymns, or spiritual songs, that's where the word of Christ dwells in us richly also. But it doesn't just say to sing. It says to sing with gratitude in your hearts to God. And worship team, thank you for leading us. But don't just lead professionally. Don't just lead with skill. Lead with skill. We need you to lead with skill. But lead with gratitude in your hearts and lead us to sing to the Lord. When It's when we sing to the Lord. That's when God activates the word of Christ that dwells in us richly. So now put all this together. Our new self is in Christ, which means our identity is now in Christ. The old self we're supposed to put off. We're supposed to lay, put to death the deeds of the old self and to take off the old self and the attitudes of the old self. And we're to take on our new identity, our new self. We're to live out of our new identity. We're to forgive out of our new self. And we're to talk to one another out of our new self. And when we do that, we come to verse 17. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's how it's possible. Live out of your new self. Take off the old self. Live out of the new self. Let the peace of Christ rule. Let the word of Christ dwell. And as that happens, you can live a life so that everything you do, whatever you do, in word or deed, you do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, just to make this clear, I want to bring it down this way. Your old self is dead. Your new self, assuming you're born again, is now alive. Your old self is linked to sin. And it's incapable of loving God, knowing God, obeying God, the old self will never enjoy reading the Bible. The old self will never enjoy worship. And if you don't enjoy the Bible, if you don't enjoy worship, you're living out of your old self or you're not born again. But your new self now loves worship because your new self loves Jesus. Your new self is in Jesus. Your new self not only loves Jesus, he your new self loves the Word of God. It loves when the Word of God dwells in us. And your new self is able to hear God. If you're living out of your old self, you'll never learn to hear the voice of God. People who don't know how to hear God's voice, it's because you're living out of your old self. Your old self will never hear God's voice. It's impossible. But when you're born again, you hear the voice of God continually. The old self will never know when the peace of Christ is ruling or not. But the new self can tell when the peace of Christ is ruling. The old self will never love the word of Christ. The new self loves the word of Christ. No, it's time to shift. I began by saying I want to introduce you to someone special. And I want to introduce you today. This is where I admonish you. I'm done teaching, I'm starting to admonish. Please, get to know your new self. Because your new self is just like Jesus. Don't remain tethered to your old self. Don't let your past define your present and don't let it determine your future. You are a new person in Christ. One of my favorite verses, my wife's favorite verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And I declare that over you today. Now I want to activate, I want to lead us right now. I want to lead us to put off the old self. I want to lead us to take up our new identity in Christ. But I must begin here. If you are not born again, that's where you need to start. And I want to lead you in a prayer right now to receive a new self in Christ. Would you pray with me? 
Father God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to do the unthinkable for me, to die for me. But when he died, I died, my old self died. And when he was raised, my new self was raised. And today, I consider myself dead in Christ, alive in Christ. Come now, Holy Spirit of God, and live in me. Regenerate my spirit that I will be born again. And I receive in Jesus' name my new self. Hallelujah. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, please text me, please email me, please get a hold of me. I want to just affirm and validate this moment for you. And now for all of us, whether you were a believer years ago and you've been born again for some time, or whether you just prayed with me, let's make this declaration together. Today, Sunday, May 3, I put to death my old self and my old ways in Jesus' name. I throw off my bad desires. I throw off my bad conduct. I throw off my bad attitudes and my bad language. I throw it off and I put it under the blood of Jesus. And right now, Father, I receive a new name. I receive a new identity. I affirm that I am a new person in Jesus Christ. I just want to stop. My friend, if you've never done this, don't just watch this. Please enter in with me. Please do it. If you've never thrown off your old self, I just, I need to stop. I need to call you to action. Please join with me. If you've never, you may have been a Christian 20 years, but you've never done this before. Please do it today. Let's do it. Lord Jesus, I throw off my old self, dead and forever bound to sin. And I receive my new self in Jesus' name. I receive the shift in my identity from who I was to who I am today and who I'm becoming because I am in Christ. Today, I am linked to Christ and I receive the character of Christ. I receive the righteousness of Christ. I receive the empowerment of Christ. I receive the peace of Christ and I receive the word of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you. Uh, thank you for these special moments together.